I'm Mandy, and this is Mandy in the Making. Today, we're gonna do a cook and clean with me. The cooking part is gonna be all Southern stuff, and I know you're gonna love it. The recipe I'm gonna share with you first has been in my family for several generations. Um, I believe it's my great-grandfather's recipe for chili, and I know a lot of people do their chili differently. I really love this recipe, so I wanted to share with you. But then I'm going to share with you my husband's grandmother's recipe for cornbread. And we actually have her cast iron skillet that we cook it in. She passed away several years ago, and as a Christmas gift from Stephen's stepmom, she gave him the cast iron skillet that his grandmother used to make cornbread and she also gave him a really cool gift, a cool way of sharing the cornbread recipe with him. So I'm gonna show that to you. So let's get started. Here's how you know a recipe is very well loved. Look at all of those splatter marks. For the chili recipe, you're going to need some vegetable oil, some ketchup, onion that's gonna be diced, pound to a pound and a half of lean ground beef, chili powder, salt, diced tomatoes, no sauce, although I'm not gonna use that whole entire can, I only need about half of it, and then whatever type of beans you would like to put in your chili. I just purchased the chili beans this time. You can use kidney beans or pinto beans, whatever you like. To easily dice my onions, I use this, and I'm gonna link this below. I got it off of Amazon. It has two different ways it, you can cut things really large or you can dice them, which is the one I have in there now. So all of these are removable, all of these parts are removable, and you can put every single thing in the dishwasher, which is really important to me. So I'm gonna dice up my onion just using this, that way I don't have to cry about it. I quarter the onions just to make it easier to go into this and cut. remove the top and I've got all of my diced onion. So the first thing I'm going to do is heat my pan or my skillet to about medium to medium high heat and add a couple of tablespoons of vegetable oil to the pan. Okay so now that the oil has heated up I'm going to put the ground beef in. And I'm also gonna add the diced onion in with it to saute the onions as well. I'm gonna let that brown up. I did use a larger onion than I usually do, but we really love onions so it doesn't matter to us. You can use a smaller onion or you can leave the onion out if you don't like it. Now that this is browned up, it is not as lean as I would have liked it to have been. I usually like to use 93.7, but all I had on hand was 80.20, or maybe it's 85.15, I'm not sure. Either way, I need to drain it, so I'm gonna do that now. Now that I've drained the ground beef, I'm gonna add that into this pot, and I'm gonna add everything else in along with it. Since these are chili beans, they have a, a great sauce to them, so I don't drain these first. I would drain like kidney beans or pinto beans more than likely, but these chili beans, I just leave the sauce in it. I also did not drain these diced tomatoes. I'm gonna use one cup of ketchup. I only need eight ounces of tomato sauce, so I'm just gonna use about half of this can. The recipe calls for one and a half tablespoons of chili powder. I just eyeball it. And then just add some salt. I'm just gonna stir it all together. And then it just needs to simmer. The recipe says for an hour and a half. I've never let it simmer that long. I just, however long it takes me to make the cornbread is how long it's gonna simmer. This is what it looks like. 
I'm gonna bring it up to a, a simmer and then I'm gonna cover it and just let it sit while I start on the cornbread. Next to our refrigerator on the wall, we have this. This is what Stephen's stepmom gave him as a Christmas gift along with the skillet. And I'm gonna explain to you what all of these pictures are. So if you look close up, this is a picture of a bowl with some stuff in it, eggs, shortening. Then this is a picture of a skillet that is greased. This is a picture, and she also gave us this, by the way, um, this masher. But this is a picture of the next step in the process of making the cornbread. And this is the picture of what the cornbread looks like when it comes out of the, of the oven. And this is the bottom of it, what it should look like. Now these pictures are just random pictures, filler pictures, but on the back of these pictures are the instructions on how to make the cornbread. So you see that's there. So what I do when it's time to make cornbread is I just come over here and I remove those three and take them over with me so that I can make the cornbread. Okay, I've got the oven preheating to 425. And I wanted to show you the ingredients that you need for this recipe. You really don't need a lot. You just need some shortening. We just use Crisco. You need some self-rising cornmeal. You need buttermilk. I think it does make a difference whether you use like the low fat or the whole. This is the whole buttermilk. And two eggs. And you need a great cast iron skillet. I believe you can use a cake pan, but I think it makes a big difference on the crust and how it bakes if you use something like a cast iron skillet. Like I mentioned before, this was my husband's grandmother's cast iron skillet, so it's been in the family for quite some time and it is well loved and well seasoned. The first thing I'm gonna do is grease the skillet. It needs to be very well greased and it's not with like Pam or anything, you're gonna use shortening to grease it. I just use a snack bag, like a little Ziploc bag, and I stick my hand in it and I just dip it down into the shortening to get enough and then I just smear it all over the bottom and the sides of the skillet. All right, so that's what your skillet should look like. It should be very well greased. Okay, so now I have two and a half cups of the self-rising cornmeal in here. I'm gonna add to it a half cup of the shortening two eggs. I'm just going to take this pastry cutter and I'm going to mix all of this together by pressing down into it and kind of doing a circular motion. You know it's done when it looks like this. It kind of looks very coarse like crumbs. Now I'm gonna add two cups of buttermilk and I'm gonna stir it all together until it is well mixed. I'm gonna use a fork to do that. You don't have to worry about all of the lumps being out. Just make sure that you've grabbed all of the dry ingredients from the bottom and mixed it in very well. Now you simply just pour it into the skillet. going to go into the oven at 425 for 25 to 35 minutes. You want to place it towards the bottom of the oven just so that you get that good golden brown around the crust.
I've got some help in here. Okay, I'm shredding the cheese. Thank you, buddy. This looks pretty perfect. It is starting to get brown around the edges. There's a few brown spots on the top. So now I just need to flip it over. I always put it on a, um, a cake plate just so that we can cover it and stay sealed because we're going to eat it over several days. yummy cornbread. The crust on it is perfect. There is nothing like buttermilk cornbread, especially when it's served with some really great homemade chili. It's time to dig in y'all. All right guys, lunch is served. We're having this for lunch today just so I have time to edit, but chili with cheese on top, cornbread, and of course sweet tea in mason jar glasses. It doesn't get more southern than this. <laughs>